All right, let's see. Top tier on and standard. Mm, pretty much the same comps. Um, you can. I, I still like looking through this window. I think it gives you some intel in terms of how they're dispersing. Sometimes you get a free shot of damage. You don't want to hang out there, um, but you know, just getting that intel and, or getting and getting a shot is fine. You can also sit in uh, this corner over here, look down over here, sit in this corner over here, look down over here. Um, there's, there's plenty of options uh, for places that you can start. Um, ideally, you want to try to get some intel if you can, or, or look and see if your team is getting intel. You also want to see how your team is dispersing as you play. I'll look at your link in a second, here. So you're going through the middle, which is mostly fine. Remember, if he's stock turret, you can pretty much just shoot him into the face and it'll be fine. It's not a good trade for you though, he's got pretty decent DPM even though he's uh, obviously got the TP gun on it. So whenever you're in a, a situation like that, you don't want to just sit there and keep poking out. Like in a paper tank, uh, you know, this is a lot like playing any other tank with, with, without a whole lot of armor. Unless you've got other distinct advantages, you don't want to shoot at his hull. His hull is the strongest part. Um, that's going to be difficult for you to, to break. Especially when, uh, if you run XVM, I don't know if you do or not, whether you run stats or not, XVM is useful because XVM tells you when they have a stock turret. See how it says Churchill 1, there's a little asterisk next to his name. Uh, that means he has a stock turret. You bled a lot of health there. They're pushing up into your uh, town. Uh, they're all on this F1 right there. They do have some guys over here, which is fine. You probably want to go and make sure that these guys don't die. Uh, you can probably clear out the, the side as well. No, oh, shoot! Okay, there's one one-shot guy and one <laughs> and a different guy. Shoot the one-shot guy. That's fine. Make him chase you. You don't want to hang out here, so you probably want to press this. Good job. Now take out that. No, no, no. Take out the. Uh, yeah, I guess you could push that guy. But you, you want to look to clear out that Churchill one so that you can get someplace safer. You don't want to sit where you're at. Otherwise, as they push forward, they're going to be able to start shooting uh, pretty darn easily. It's fine. And then they got a KB220. You guys push through. You actually probably want to go south through here if you can and try to come up through this line because you don't want them to be able to, to reinforce. We've got a church three, ignore the BT-7, it's not, not an issue. You, you don't want your guys to get, you, you want to put on some flanking pressure. Go, go forward, forward. Oh my god, you want to save, save. Uh. I think he, I feel like he wasted a little bit too much time on an inconsequential tier three. Get him, dude! Get him! Stay on him! Did not save. Okay, so their Churchill three is on that outside, so you can ignore him. Go back up through this middle and try to get to where that to where that ram two is. What you want to do is you want to catch them apart if you can. Uh, if you can sort of save your Lorraine out there, that'd be fantastic. Not sure if you can or not. You should get a shot right here. You can shoot through the car. Oh, the bounce. A little bit higher, but close. Yeah, and then go up through this line. And you know that this Churchill's going to be around here, so about the time you get up there, he's going to be in that area. So now is when you should probably load your premium shell, just to be on the safe side. Oh, 
Yeah. Don't push forward there. Don't push forward here because the ch church three is going to be over. Oh, church three is on cap. And then just get off this plane. You want to just go onto a different plane. And, like if you can go around through this side, you'll be fine. Take your time, you got plenty of time. You don't need to rush out there. This is another tank that you want to shoot in the face. You can just shoot him in the track you need to reset. Very nice. There you go. Keep shooting him in the face. Oh, a little bit more to your right. Uh oh. This is not a very good side scraping tank, unfortunately. So you probably just want to move, try, try to relocate, because he's not a very good player. So you might actually be able to range it, outrange him. So like, if you backed up, for example, went all the way back down over here, you know, by sort of by this statue, given his positioning, you might be able to spot him and shoot him without him uh, spotting you. Which, if he's still in the same place. Which, it's entirely possible that he is. He's a pretty bad player. This is a little bit too early. Oh, you're going, you're going for the roundabout? Eh, I guess. I mean, you have a reasonable amount of time, but I don't think it's that reasonable. Like, you would have been better, like, you know, maybe popping up on this side trying to get the reset before you uh, went all the way around. And the reason why is that you're gonna... Oh, he came off. Even better! Fantastic. He's probably pushing south along that midline, so keep that in mind. Because he's probably thinking, oh, well, he's only one shot. So you want to be a little bit more aggressive in your peaking there. You know he came off the cap, so why are you checking the cap? You know, That's the one place you know that he's not, is on the cap. And so I still think he's pushing down south. And then so whenever you're in this situation where somebody's hunting you, 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 you need to have some intel because you know where he was. He has no idea where you are because by now, from the last time you were lit, you could be anywhere on the map. I felt like you probably drove down one of these lanes. I would have thought like you know, the same lane that that Churchill 1 is on. But you never know. And then so the longer that you leave him not lit, the more question marks there it is because now, where is he? You know, by now he can be anywhere. Uh, but I do, I, I do agree with the idea of driving forward. I still would have driven forward down this line. Uh, I, I really feel like you could have caught up uh, if he had gone down that way. Um, and so the idea that you're that you want to do right now, since you don't know where he is and he doesn't know where you are, you want to drive right into this building because that's gonna, you know, if there was like a garage there, you could hide in it. Anyways, so the idea is that if you don't know where he is, he doesn't know where you are, uh, but you know where he was last, so he had to have traveled away from the cap at some point. You are faster than him, so if you come up behind him, you will have an advantage. Um, so driving forward will always give you an advantage in this uh, uh, situation. And then see how once you start driving at a, at a perpendicular angle to, the, to where he was, now you start to, to, to question, right? So. Here, here's what you do know, and then you always have to think about what, what do I know and what do I not know. So you know that he was on cap, right? And you know that he left. And you know that you were in the middle and that you came around this way, right? And so when he left cap, you know that he probably didn't head west here, right? Because you would have seen him as you came through here if he headed west through there from the time that he came off the cap because when you were turning uh, when you were about right in this area right here is when when he got off the cap and it was like oh okay well he's doing something else so you know that means that he did one of two things one he either drove straight south down this lane right here or one of these lanes or he went onto the field so you were kind of slow in getting there because you kind of stopped and you were spotting the cap and doing other things uh, and that's fine you drove through this side which is fine so you're fairly certain that he didn't come east Right? So if he came south, that means he probably came this way. Right, So he came this way and then went west, if, if that's what he did. 
um, you know that he didn't go around the other way because otherwise you would have ran into him now. So you always have to think about which way is he potentially going. So if he's moving clockwise, you want to move clockwise. You don't want to move counterclockwise because otherwise you're going to run into him face to face. And that's not what you want to do. So you know that he's back on cap. So now you're back into the same situation where you can drive up to the same area and go to the same thing. I still think that it would be better to uh, to outrange him, but it, do it all depends on where he is. And you don't know where he is yet, so you're going to have to play it out. Uh, if you're out in the field, you can use a lot of bushes out here to spot the cap without being lit. Uh, there's not really that many great areas uh, over here. Like, you can use these little cubbies uh, to get shots at him, uh, where you'll at least be a little bit hauled down. And again, you should probably load your premium shells here just to be on the safe side. Never hurts to have the carry shells. And you want to be careful driving right through here, because depending on where he's at, he can light you as you pass through there. And then so all you're looking for is one shot, one reset, one bit of damage. That's all you need right now. Don't don't overplay it. There you go. Perfect. Now just back off. Go someplace else. You got six minutes on the clock. It's plenty of time. Don't don't go back to the same well. You know he's not a good player. So right, so one of two things will happen. He'll either stay on or he'll get off. Right, if he gets off, most likely he'll try to come chase you down. Maybe. So it looks he probably moved back, like north. And so that's why you want to reposition. Unless you know for a fact that he's not going to move. You still have 50 seconds, but again, it's, it's always tick, 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 tick. Don't, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you only have 10 seconds to spot him and shoot. You want to be able to spot him with, you know, let's say 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Uh, and then you can decide, do I, is this a shot that I want to take or not? Um, so, really what you needed to do is you needed to get another shot of damage before you did that, because that was, it was basically a suicide run. Which is unfortunate, but that uh, them surprised. Um, so a, a couple of things. The biggest problem is that you tried to sit here and trade with that Churchill 1, which, which had a stock turret, and you were just doing it really, really poorly. You lost like over half of your life doing just that. And you really didn't do that much damage to that Churchill 1. That was, that was, it was just a horrible, horrible early game trade, and that really, really hurt you. Because if you just had another 100 health, probably not even that, like another 75 health, you probably could have just shot this guy in the face, just stood there and shot that guy in the face. Um, and that, that's, what, that's what really hurts you. And then just, you know, take your time, especially with bad players, take your time, reposition, use, use your superior knowledge of the map and, and how to play the game in order to reposition. And don't keep coming back to the same place or don't charge him. You don't, you don't need to charge him. Um, he's, he's a bad player. He most likely has slow reaction time. He was firing an APCR, which is fine, but he still needs to be able to aim and hit you. Um, and so you have you were uh, a lot of situations you were in areas where you really could have abused like vision mechanics and things like that especially like if he's in a heavy tank on the back of the cab where he's at you can just you know slowly drive up this five line until you spot him and then back up and then shoot him um sort of thing so just something to keep in mind All right, so if we look at the stats, D's be the stats. Uh, pretty good game. I mean, it's not a, a, a Chinu with 2k damage is, is pretty good. Um, your shooting against the Churchills was pretty bad. You shot the Churchill 3 pretty well, um, but you didn't shoot the Churchill 1 well at all. Um, but them's the breaks. GG, nice try. 
I will send you a code through the official forums. Alright, so the next one will be Sundance's. Even though he was late. Late! Um, I, th I think you could have outplayed that guy, um, especially if you know that he's a bad player or a new player, um, you know, use your, take your time, relocate, get a shot, relocate, get a shot, relocate, you know, just take your time, wear him down, and then you can go in for the kill. As like so much of the, the game, uh, in that sense is pacing, you know, know the down and distance, how much time do you have before you, you have to make, make your next move and, and, you know, use that time wisely, use it to relocate to someplace where, where he's not going to be. All right. So, uh, pretty much the same comp, uh, it's a plus one game. Uh, so not that bad. Um, I still like spotting uh, up this middle area over here. I generally drive up this ridge, and if they YOLO somebody down the middle, you can always just bail out to the to the east. Um, if you do come this way, you can't really spot that well, unfortunately, not from the south side. Uh, you can go into this area here, but this doesn't really spot a whole lot for you, uh, for your team. Um, you can sort of do a loop right here, but I don't really think it's productive because I don't really feel like you get a whole lot of value out of it. And then this is one of those things, so you have a, a, a Chafee in front of you, and uh, whenever you have light tanks, you don't want them to be like super close to, get to each other. It just creates a redundancy that's not really necessary. So you got most of your team headed west. Uh, you got a few of your guys headed east, and IS-3 is headed east. Your, your Luva is in that middle there. The 2801 is actually dangerous to you if he's got the turf. It's a trap! And so this is why I don't I don't like having light tanks on this hill, especially if they're just gonna snipe. I don't I don't necessarily feel that it's productive. You can light there though, so that these guys know what they're up against. Like if they see a bunch of heavies coming up here, that would be useful intel to have. You're a little bit too afraid there. If you don't have six cents, uh that's one thing, if you do have six cents, you can sit there and shoot that guy through those bushes. You've got a bunch of guys on that back line, which is not helping you. But again, like you did not spot these guys coming up, and, and that's a large part of your role, is to, f is to tell your team, hey, this is what you're going to be up against, just so you know. I'm, I'm just I'm just cluing you in, right? And that helps your team, right? It helps your team decide, okay, where do I move? How aggressive am I? Right? When they come up there and they're already surprised, they're like, oh crap, their whole team's up here. That That's on you. Because that's something that you could have sniffed out really easily. Same thing on this side. See how this guy hasn't spotted anything? Yet your guys are still way in the back. You really want to avoid that. You know, three light tanks on the west. They have three light tanks in total. Gotta, gotta get in the game. And so I, I really don't feel like you're that productive at all coming onto this west side. And it may well be that your tank, you, that your team is being held up by zero tanks. You don't know. And that's the importance of intel, right? If you know that they've got nothing there, then it's like, okay, well, why are we stopped here? That's like, where are you going? Where are you going now? Like, you were starting to head up here to help out your your Luva and your IS three, but now. Not sure where you're going. Mm. 
And see how zero tanks. Held up for three minutes by zero tanks. Can't do it. Can't let it happen. Uh, this is not, a, trying to shoot through that little window is not really a good position. You can still head over here, see where your guys are going, get up underneath these guys over here. So their team has played this very, very poorly, your team has played it very, very slow. They got held up for too long by zero tanks. And this is something that we talk about a lot, not just on this map, but um, on, on any map. Um, anytime you get held up by zero tanks, right, they're slowly whittling away on your team over here. You're, you're losing on this other side. Uh, and so you want to avoid allowing that to happen. See how they're pushing across now? Took way too long. You always got to ask yourself if you're this SU-100Y, why am I still back here? Literally zero shots out of these guys. Right? And you're still you're still a little too snipey dipey. Not entirely sure what you're doing. Um, you need to s start ferreting some stuff out here. Your team is going to lose here. It is simply a matter of time. They're getting in encapsulated on this super pershing. That super pershing is going to die. Just, just far too much inactivity. Not, not just out of you, right? Out of all these guys, just too much inactivity. You, can, you cannot. It is inexcusable to draw against zero tanks. It, it should, zero tanks should be a no contest. It shouldn't be a draw. They shouldn't be able to hold you off that long with zero tanks. So this is so this is a, the, what I always talk about in the game. You're sitting there and you're waiting for your team to die before you're going to have any meaningful shots. And you want to always avoid being in that position. You don't want to be waiting going, oh, come on, Bulldog, die already so I can get some shots here. That's not the position that you want to be in. You want to be in a position so that when those guys try to get shots on your Bulldog, that's when you have shots. Don't be waiting for your team to die before you're going to have shots. Same thing over on this side. These guys, as they push up through here, it's going to be a, a, a bad position for them. Enemy armor is damaged. It's a trap. I think he might just drive himself Enemy into the into the damaged. river at this rate. It's a trap. Okay, and so you want to get out of this position now, because your position is becoming increasingly insecure. Your guys on the north don't have any eyes, right? But it's not like you're going to be uh, able to front against a lot, like let's say the 5100 pushes you. It's not like you're going to be able to front against that guy. You need to catch people coming across an open plane at this point, because you're, you're so far behind the 8-ball now. So like this 2801 will likely come across this K line, this Ferdinand will come out through here, the 5100 may come out on either side, it's, it's hard to say. So the Roomba is going to kill your IS-3 probably. He wouldn't have pushed up there unless he thought he could. The 2801 will eventually be on the K-line to kill the M44, would be my guess. Oh, the IS-3. That's just, you, you're leaving too many of your teammates out on an island while you drive around. And this, this game is it's less about sightseeing and more about shooting enemy tanks. You're like ex you're like exploring the terrain. You're you're playing co-op mode. <laughs> or not co-op mode. Uh, what's the what's the mode where you play the computer? PV you're playing PVE. That's fine. You got the drop on him. No 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 auto aim from that it's range a against a, a tank that fast. And you do not want to close against him. If he's got the derp, you don't want to close. You want to shoot at him as he comes across that open plane. That's the thing. You don't want to push out there because the, the Roomba will eventually be behind him. But you are going to need to get this guy down. You had your opportunity when you had high ground on that hill. You could have gotten a couple shots into him. And then you could, could have potentially pushed around through the outside. You want to try to make this into a distance engagement. Ready to fire. Oh, he didn't pen. 
Go after him. Get him. Now you can auto aim. So anyways, uh, that's why you- oh, just auto aim. Auto aim. Auto aim. So, one of the artillery already fired, the other one did not. There it is. So we're 5100s over at your M44. So, one of the things is, you know, you know when you need to make a distance engagement and know when you need to make a close engagement. His, he needed that to be a close engagement and, and you said, alright, I'll, I'll help you out. Which is honorable of you. I mean, it's, it's really nice of you to level the playing field for him, to make, it, to make it easier for him. But if you want to win the game, you need to put people, you need to put people in disadvantageous situations. Um, and when you see a 2801 with the derp, that means staying at range, Picking away at him because he can't do anything to stop you. He wasn't going to be able to, I mean, I guess technically he could have taken a miracle shot, sniped you as you were sitting on top of the hill as he was driving across, but eh, it's a little unlikely. Got him. It's fine. Look for the Roomba crossing through the middle. The Ferdinand will probably be a little bit tougher of a sell. And so, one of the things that you want to do, you you need intel. You need to know where things are, so you can't be down in this ditch. You need to be up on that ridge. If you light them or if they light you, both pieces gives you intel, right? But what you're doing right now is you're burying your head in the sand, and you're saying, all right, I hope he's around this next corner. You have the ability to know whether they're on your side of the map or not, because you've got a big ridge there, you've got a light tank with great camo. Use it to your advantage. So you're scouting out very, very small sections of the map. You don't know anything that's going on right here. The Roomba could have literally just drove across in there to towards your cap. I mean, you don't know. So this is what you should have done just on the way north, right? And if you didn't spot anything, that that gives you information. That tells you something. You need to, you need to be a little bit higher up on the hill here. There you go. Right, and so like if you did this run going north and you didn't see anything, then that gives you intel. That gives you that lets you know that you've got a little bit of time. Oops. And then if you've got a little bit of time, what you can do is start tacking around this way, seeing what you can see there. They have four minutes left. Presuming that they want to win, they're gonna have to try to push. The Roomba is the best candidate to try to take out early. Um, again, distance is your friend. Using your camo is lol. Lol. At this point, I would probably just push artillery. Just go beeline. You don't know exactly where the Roomba is, um, but you gotta take a chance. Because you actually have an opportunity to win this game. Okay, he's on cap. That even makes it even easier. And the, the nice thing about the T-37 is that it is fast, so unless they put multiple people on cap, um, you know, almost no matter where you are, you're going to be able to reset. And just take your time. Take your time. Take your time. You're going to need to go a little bit more to the south here. Um, there's a bunch of trees here, which is not fantastic. Uh, you can actually come up through the trees over on this side and spot them pretty easily. Take your time. Take your time. Enemy is hit. Enemy armor is hit. Enemy armor is destroyed. It's fine. And then move up a little bit. Get another peek. And then again, know your time. You've got plenty of time. So just, just take a little peek, come back down, and then decide where you need to go to get a good shot. Don't take that shot. It's a trap! Okay, unless he likes you. Like, okay, so he's off the cap, so I would just bail. There's no reason for you to have a confrontation with him. If he's not going to stay on the cap, it's fine. I would actually go, still go through over here and look for, look for artillery. So once again, range is your friend. Use your speed to your advantage.
you got plenty of time to get back to the cap if he if he decides to get back on the cap. Otherwise, you know, it's not something that you worry about. Wake me up when you stop doing your zoom thing. And I never cross this bridge. It's always better to go through the water. Um, this bridge only opens you up to shots from everywhere or spots from everywhere. Do not drive through the cab. Start heading back right now. Don't, you don't even need to go up there. You need to go back that way. Because you need to... You, you, so you're not concerned about the one on cap. You're, if the Artie's not here, you have to be... Again, so it's deductive reasoning, right? If the Artie's not here, where is the Artie? So you're taking the, unfortunately, most circuitous route. Which is tough. But, yeah. See, this is the tough part because you're gonna have so little time. Ready to find Snap it! Uh, got it! It's a trap! Run away! Run away! No! No! Run away! No, that's the opposite of run away! No, don't close the gap! Don't close the gap! Okay, he stopped. No! Aim! Oh. Time's gonna run out. Visayed! Okay, so... A number of things. Uh, one, early game, you came over this way, which is, it's fine, I don't like playing this side in light tanks, but coming over here is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the only thing that you did poorly is that, um, you didn't spot these guys at all. Like, you didn't get any intel for your team. Um, and them having some info as far as what was coming up there could have helped prepare them, uh, if they were paying attention, uh, for what they were doing out down here. You had too many guys back on that JK line anyways, but... Them's the breaks. That's what that's what puppies do. Um, and then you spent like the the entire mid game just kind of driving around here, like in this area. Um, and I that th was that was pretty inexplicable as far as, as what to do. And so what you'll notice is that your team got defeated by zero tanks. Right. That that was the that was the the, the part the, the the big part of the problem because your team got hung up by by zero tanks. And that and in that time when they were hung up by zero tanks. The, the enemy team was, was whittling away on you guys on that southwest. You know, nibble, 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 nibble. They had 15, 15 of their tanks in this quarter of the map. So you just never, you just, your team just never decided that they weren't going to use the rest of the map. You had a bunch of guys sitting over here for, until like, you know, two and a half, two, two and a half minutes into the game. Uh, until they finally pushed up. And when they pushed up, what they, what they see? Nothing. What was in the box? nothing um and so the that, that was that was just a huge huge problem in the team because what that what that meant is that there was far too much strain on far too many of your teammates over here and you you allowed far too many of them to die and i and i think that was the the, the biggest problem uh, as you continue to drive around here um and your is3 and that and the luva that went up here died like you weren't anywhere that you could help them and you were you were never any place where you could help your team and that that was the the, the hugest part um i like getting intel with the with the light tanks um but you don't necessarily need to but you cannot play third line in a light tank um you should at, at the very least be able to play second line and so what is second line second line means that you can help your front line right wherever your front line is and no matter what tank they are that that uh bulldog that was sitting up here you needed to be closer into an area where you could actually cover him you should not be waiting for your teammates to die before you're looking you before you're going to be able to be in a position to help them and i think that was that was the biggest problem in this game because this was a completely winnable game um even without late game heroics, uh, you, you, you really could have done it. And, and again, uh, particularly at the very end, 
as you're coming through here, you don't see any artillery. If the artillery is not here, by default, right, you should know he probably headed to Cath. There shouldn't be any going around this outside. So you got him in the in the very, very nick of time. And then you kind of charged that Roomba a little bit. I'm not entirely sure that was necessarily. Once he fired wildly, and he fired completely wildly, stop, aim, get your shots. If you can get a track shot, more the better. You win that game. Even even after all of that in the beginning, even after your tank losing, not, not drawing out to zero tanks, you still had an opportunity to win that game in the late game if you just slowed down and aimed and, and shot that guy after he shot wildly. Um, you also could have just sat on this ridge, right? Hold down over here. That's a hard shot for him to make as you're as you're railing into him. Um, so keep that in mind. So if you look at the at the stats, uh, your super Pershing did decently on that side. He, uh, he, you know, it's it's difficult when you're up against you know ten tanks uh, or so uh, to to do well, but uh, them's the breaks. Uh, you're reasonably efficient with your shots when you took them. I just feel like your gun was so inactive for so long. I don't feel like their team did anything fantastically. It was just your team being that bad. Um, like you look at your eights on that side. Uh, Desert Fox got 292 damage. It was basically one shot of damage. And, uh, and Whitey here got, uh, basically two shots of damage out of his is3 and that that's that's not that's not enough from those guys uh, but their team was was just as bad right and it's just which team wanted to throw it more really gg nice try All right, and the next one is Hematicus uh, KV1S on mines. Alrighty, top tier. Uh, there's a bishop on the other team. That's going to be a slight pain. So the KV-1S, is uh, it doesn't have super speed, but you can get yourself in a position where you can shoot up into this area right here. Presumably if you had 100 on it. Let's, let's find out. You have the 122 on it. Alright, well, yeah, what are you going to do? It is not very accurate. So, but what you can do, still do, is stop about right there and start aiming in. It's gonna, the aim time on this is going to be really long, and you basically aim for that corner right there, and then try not to shoot your team. And then, so usually what I'll do is I'll stop here, get a shot up over here, like if I'm in a slower, um, heavy tank. And then I'll try to go anchor this side, which is where you're probably going to trade the best. So start aiming in, start aiming in, start aiming in. No, you got to aim a little more to your left. Ah, see? It's a trap! So what you want to do there is you don't want to trace that guy out there. You want to be sitting right here already fully aimed right on that corner. And then just as soon as he gets up there, all you got to do is press the button. GG. Um, I, I see a lot of people tracing in this game. Tracing is, is fine if you're playing a first person shooter um, with like uh, instant fire. Um, in this game, they're, they're all projectiles. Uh, so projectiles uh, with aim time, sorry, uh, is what I actually meant to say. Uh, and so the, the problem is that uh, 
you have to take the aim time into account. You can't just trace because it's not an instant aim. It's a trap. So they they got some guys coming around this outside. It's not that much of a, of a big deal. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Well, your steward killed himself. You don't know what else is over here, so you got to be careful coming through here. Can get that guy. Uh, take a peek down this way before you swing through here. You know that the T34 is going around the back, which is fine. They do have a bishop. The bishop can hit you anywhere in here, so that's something to keep in mind. Back up. It's a trap. Or go forward. One of the two. So that was the bishop, by the way. Probably, anyways. See, and, and then again, aim, aim in, be ready, be aimed in. Especially when you have uh, tanks with these long, long, long aim times. And so you do not want to be proxy spotted by these guys, that's always bad, especially when they have a bishop or an FP-304. They could very easily hit you where you're at. See how you got, you've got a Kini over here. You actually want to push up into these rocks over here. Um, that will help take some of the pressure off of these guys over here. The bishop will not be able to hit you if you're on the other side of that rock right there. But as long as you stay proxy slit here where you're at, he can hit you. Should he decide to. They're also breaking through this side. And then if you are going to attack these guys, never attack them over the top. As long as there's artillery active, it is very, very, very easy for them to, to hit you. Um, it is always better to just come off the hill and, and go and shoot those guys. Um, there's a lot of protected areas that you can sit in, particularly right here where you can take them out. You're going to have a lot of guys behind you if you try to poke down here, and that's sort of the, the big problem here. It's a trap! See the T-82s on your, on your side right here? You're not, you're completely ignoring them. Meanwhile, the bishop is still shooting at you. Boy, the derpage, the derpage. Lol, you're gonna have to fix it, otherwise he's just gonna keep chaining you. Oh, you're stuck. The stuckness. Diamond in. You're rushing your shots a little bit. Uh, the Matilda is struggling to, to pen you a bit. So if he's going to do that, just let him. Make sure you get your shot. He, he's backing up. So you want to get to him before he backs all the way out. You don't want to let him escape at this point. Um, your teammate's not going to light him. Oh, I, I stand corrected. Your teammate is obviously going to light him. Are they going to shoot him? Is I guess is the bigger question. I wouldn't worry about the Type 95 at all. Don't worry about him. Uh, lol. Lol. I would still push that Matilda. You still got to go, go, go. You got an opportunity. Oh, he's coming back. Even better. Push him. Push him. Push him. Works. And then push up and get ready to go out there. You need to help your guys. You need to help your boys. No, go out and help them. Ah. Alright, that's fine. I would actually push down through this side over here. There's, there's, no, there's no benefit for you going over here. It just moves you further and further away from your team. Uh, you want to avoid moving further and further away from your team at this point. Uh, there's no additional benefit. Uh, if they come, if they send their artillery over here through cap, you you have teammates behind you to take care of that. But what you're doing now is you're basically all splitting up. You're going, all right, let's make this into a bunch of one v ones instead of a, a three v two, uh, and that that usually does not work out to your favor.
Yeah, it's a very common theme. Like you'll notice, I harp on this a lot in when we do these replay reviews. You need to find ways to help your teammates. You need to find ways to help your teammates live. And splitting up is usually not a very good way. You should be able to get a shot on that guy right now. Yeah, you can. You still can. So that's fine. If you want to kill the grill first, that's that is fine. The bishop is not a very fast tank. The grill is probably still back in here someplace. Try not to go and cap. Your gun should be faced yeah towards the back of there. Do not go and cap. Go around it. Just make sure whether he's there or not. See how you guys made this into a bunch of one v one confrontations. Now you're sectioned two. It's they're like it's like a he, he tagged out, right? It's the next guy's turn. All right, go in, go in, Sexton. You got this. All right. So the grill's probably not here. Okay, it's definitely not here. So then go along through the back and start coming around through here. You, the bishop might still be in the same area, about over here. Don't go through cap. Just keep driving along the back. So that means the grill is either over here or back over here. So see how as you're driving north, you're going to give that grill better and better shots. You're not going to get any better shots on that bishop. You could get just as good of a shot on the bishop from right here, but you're allowing the enemy team to have better shots at you. The bishop probably pushed up through the water would be my guess, since you don't see him over here. Again, remember that he's not a very fast tank. He's also a tank that you could have killed when you were right here, when your, what was it, uh, Tech 95. Yep. But at least you're reasonably close to the Sexton 2. Unfortunately, I just I don't feel like this is the smart play. I really felt like you could have cleared this uh, area over here. And then so again, deductive logic. So this is this is something that you, that, you, that you should do often. So you started over here, you came all around over here, you came around over here, then you came around over here. In, in the meantime, your uh, Type 94 came down the three line, ran into the bishop. Your Sexton two later came down the the four five line, and then went up here. So the question that you should be asking yourself right now is: You might not know where their tanks are, but you know where their tanks are not. Right? You know they are not in the base. You know they are not over here. You know they are not over here. You know they're not on the hill. You know they're not over here. So you know that that means that they're somewhere over here. Right? And so everything that you should be doing right now should be defensively west. Right? You should be looking west. Your, gun, your, your turret should never be facing anywhere on this side. Why? Because you've already cleared that side. You know that they're not over there. You know that they're somewhere over here. So you should all your gun should always be facing this way. Uh, that's fine. You will actually want to come up through this side right here and, and light that. You don't want to light it from up here. Uh, it's 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 not a very good place. It's very, very exposed. You don't have any cover. And then all you have to do is light for your sexton. You do not need to shoot anything here. Again, it's still better if you come down through here. Uh, it's just much better spots. You you will need to light it eventually. The problem with coming down here is that you can't where these rocks are. You actually need to go down over on that side. So you're just killing the time here. You're not going to be able to, to spot anything. You, you need to try to come over here. Like they know by now. So again, on their part, they don't know where you are exactly. But they know deductive logic. All that all the, that they have to do is they, they should be facing east. So you know that they will probably be facing east. Like that, that should not even be a question. And so this is the problem with uh, doing exactly what you're doing, is that you kind of kill your time. You've killed a lot, a lot, a lot of time that you could have used. And so you want to just... Trap. Oh no! So th that's a situation where you could have pulled up over here. Now you know! You know! You know! 
that they're going to be aiming on this corner, right? It's not a question. Oh, might they be aiming on this corner? No, you know that they're aiming on this corner, right? But you've killed so much time that you have no choice. You, you have no choice in the matter what to do. Um, if you had just driven straight here, two things would have happened. The guy on cap will never spot you because you could have just driven straight down here and he doesn't have any angles to spot you. And then you just come in through here, spot him, try to get your snapshot off. And then if you get it, great. If you don't, whatever. But now you're stuck. Oh, you're not stuck. No, just take your time. It's a trap. Take the time. Lol. So he's already fired. I mean, so at that point, just relax. Just relax. He fired. He got a long time to reload. His reload time, despite the fact that your aim time is very long, his reload time is still longer than your aim time. Take a deep breath. You're reasonably safe from the grill. Not super safe. I would rather be a little bit closer to the wall, but because you know that he's probably going to be somewhere on that wet. But anyways, you're reasonably safe. Just take your time. Make that shot count. Alrighty. Um, oh, I guess I, I never really broke the, the, that down. So let, let me talk about that real quick. Okay, so in this game, did I do that correctly? Yeah. So in this game, um, I, I think a large part of this game was tactics based. Like you had, you you really struggled with your aim, um, and, and running around with a derp gun is is not super great. Uh, but you didn't do yourself any favors by not aiming uh, onto onto targets, not being ready for targets that were already lit, um, for targets that you knew were coming. Like that, uh, what was it? They had they pushed one of their tanks up here. I think it was the T-34, maybe, that went through here? No, no, it was like a DW-2 that went up through here early, right? Take your time, be pre-aimed there. As soon as he pops up, punch him in the face. See? Give them, give them a ticket and say thank, thanks for coming out. All right. Make sure that you have your your shots ready, lined up uh, a, as often as you possibly can. Um, and then again, a, a lot of the after that, most of it was fine. They started pushing through your base. When they start doing that, you don't want to be caught up here. This is not a good place to be if they still have artillery active. You still don't have map control. Controlling this hill doesn't really do a whole lot for them pushing north. You want to come back down on this lower ground where you're a lot safer from being shot from the outside. You get easy shots where you don't have to try to depress your gun, right? You had to slide halfway down that hill just to get a bad shot on the back of a T1 heavy um, in front of a T, what was it, the T82 that was over here, right? You basically just scrolled down, gave that guy a, a side shot on you. Uh, you want to try to minimize your your exposure when you're trying to prevent people from driving across uh, in, in situations like that. And then at the end, just use deductive logic. You know, you knew, you knew where their tanks were not, where their artillery were not. So you knew that they had to have been on this side, but you did. You really made no effort to try to figure out where exactly. And, and I think that was sort of the greatest problem in, in that late channel. game. User was moved to your channel. User was moved right, to so your if we look channel. at the stats, hang on, I'm gonna mute you guys. Sound microphone muted. muted. And so if we look at the stats, it's a oops, trap. That's not the that's not the stats button. So if we look at the stats, uh, you didn't get a whole lot out of your team, but that'll happen. Uh, I, I really still felt like you could have won that by yourself. Very sad. Just just the grill left, but you got you got capped out. Um, overall, I mean, your shooting wasn't wasn't that bad, but again, you know, it's, especially when you're running a howitzer. Take your time, make sure you aim, make sure you make every shot count. GG though, uh, nice try, and I will send you a code through the uh, North American forums if you are uh, North American forums, which I think you are.